12. 2 Kings chapter 12, yes, sir. He said, hey, Oh, okay, he's like that. <laughs> what? All right. 2 Kings chapter 12. And uh, it's a kind of a short paragraph, I mean, a short chapter. So, uh, what's, Brother Rick, you want to read there for me? Don't mind. Uh, read, the, read down to verse 6 for me, if you don't mind. In the seventh year of Jehu, Jehosha became king. Is that right? Jehosha became Jehoash. king. Jehoash became king, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Ziba of Beersheba. Jehosha did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days in which Jehoda the priest instructed him. But the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. And Joash said to the priest, all the money of the dedicated gifts that are brought into the house of the Lord each man's census, money, each man's assessment, money, and all the money that a man purposes in his heart to bring into the house of the Lord, let the priests take it themselves, each from his constituency, and let them repair the damages of the temple wherever any dilapidation is found. We'll stop right there for a minute. So, what do we see going on here? So, Jehoash has uh, been king for how long? Yeah, he served three years, but in the seventh year, I'm sorry, in the seventh year of Jehu, right? Mm -hmm. It says Jehoash uh, became king and he reigned for 40 years in Jerusalem, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so Jehoash and Joash are variants of the same name, meaning the Lord gave, okay? Uh, so that we know that, you know, even if we do pronounce it, Joash instead of Jehoash is still the same variant of the same name. Okay, so it uh, says uh, uh, he reigned for forty years in Jerusalem, and this was a long and mostly uh, a blessed reign because we know that you know through Scripture it said that it was. Jehoash fell short of full commitment and complete godliness, but he did advance the cause of God in the kingdom of, Ju of Judah. So Jeho uh, Jehoash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days in which Jehoiada the priest instructed him, right? So this means he, he was uh, trying to do the best that he could uh, throughout his reign um, and what God wanted him to do. So this implies that when Jehoiada died, Jehoash no longer did what was right, though, in the sight of the Lord. Second um, Chronicles chapter 24 verse 15 through 24 says Jehoiada grew old and was full of days and he died he was 130 years old when he died and he, they buried him in the city of David among the kings because he had done good in Israel both toward God and his house now after the death of Jehoiada the leaders of Judah came and bowed down to the king and the king listened to them. Therefore they left the house of the Lord God of their fathers and served wooden images and idols. And wraith came uh, upon Judah and Jerusalem because of their trespasses. Yet he sent prophets to them to bring them back to the Lord. And they testified against them, but they would not listen. Then the Spirit of God came upon uh, Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada, the priest who stood above the people and said to them, Thus says the Lord, Why do you trans transgress the commandments of the Lord so that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord, he also has forsaken you. So they transpired against him, and at the command of the king, they stoned him with stones in the court of the house of the Lord. So we know that things turned bad, didn't it? Mm -hmm. It says it tells of what? They turned from the Lord to what? 
So continuing on there, verse 6, it says, Now it was so by the 23rd year of King Jehoash that the priest had not repaired the damages of the temple. That should have let somebody know real quick right there what he thought about the Lord's house, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have given somebody some kind of inkling of a yep. of a know that, uh, hey, this, you know, was uh, commanded yeah, and done. Should have been done, but yeah. they never got it done. Yeah. It says, so King Joash, uh, I mean Jehoash, called Jehoiada the priest and the other priest and said to them, Why have you not repaired the damages of the temple? Now therefore do not take more money from your constituencies, uh, but deliver it for repairing the damages of the temple. And the priests agreed, and they would neither receive more money than the people nor repair the damages of the temple. Then Jehoiada the priest took a chest, bored a hole in the lid, and set it beside the altar on the right side as one comes into the house of the Lord. And the priest kept the door, uh, put, their, put all their money brought into the house of the Lord. So it was whenever they saw that there was much money in the chest that the king's scribe and the high priest came up and put it in bags and counted the money that was found in the house of the Lord. Then they gave the money which had been uh, apportioned into the hands of uh, those who did the work, who had the oversight of the house of the Lord, and they paid it out to the carpenters and the builders who worked on the house of the Lord and to masons and stone cutters and for buying timber and hewn stone to repair the damages of the house of the Lord and for that uh, was paid out to repair the temple. However, there was not made for the house of the Lord basins of silver, trimmers, sprinkle, sprinkling bowls, trumpets, uh, articles of gold or articles of silver from the money brought into the house of the Lord. But they gave that to the workmen, and they repaired the house of the Lord with it. Moreover, they did not re require an account from the men into whose hand they delivered the money to be paid uh, to workmen, for they dwelt, I mean, for they dealt faithfully. The money from the, tres from the trespass offerings and the money from the sin offerings was not brought into the house of the Lord. It belonged to the priest. So it says, Hazael, king of Syria, sent up, I mean, went up and fought against Gath and took it. Then Hazael set his face to go up to Jerusalem. And Jehoash, king of Judah, took all the sacred things that his fathers, Jehoshaphat and Jehoram and Ahaziah, king of Judah, had dictated. Uh, I mean, uh, had dedicated and his own sacred things and all the gold found in the treasuries of the house of the Lord and in the king's house and sent them to Haziel, king of Syria. Syria. Then he went away from Jerusalem. Now the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did are they not written into the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah. And his servants arose and formed a conspiracy and killed Joash in the uh, in the house of the Milo, which goes down to Sela, for jo Jos big word. Yeah, Josachar, yeah, the son of Shemeth and Jehoshaphat, Shabad, the son of Shomer, uh, his servant struck him. So he did. So he died, and they buried him in the, his house in the city of David. Then I'm a Amaziah, his son, reigned in his place. So, as we go back, we see that the, uh, the high places were not taken away. It says this indicates that Joash implemented a halfway re reformation and not a total reform of Israel's worship. He did not take on the more difficult job of removing the high places. You know, so they did have those high places still left there. 
It says that the people were so fondly and strangely addicted to the high places that the foregoing kings, though men of riper years and greater power and courage, finally settled in their thrones, uh, could not take them away. And therefore, it is not strange if Jehoiada uh, could not remove them because they had done so much in the previous years and so when they were so respected. That's why it seems like Jehodia was not able to take them fully away. Uh, it says in verses 4 and 5 that Je uh, Jehoash makes a decree regarding the repair of the temple, right? Mm -hmm. So he's trying to do right, <clears throat> but what did he not do that most people do right now? I mean, they do these days. He didn't follow up. Right, he didn't follow up, and also another thing too is when we give our money out to somebody, we usually get a what? Receive. Receive. So therefore, he was handing money out to these people, all on what? Faith. 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 All on faith, thinking yeah. that they would get it all done. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it says all the money of the dedicated gifts. It says there was a regular income coming into the temple from several different uh, sources. Right. Since King Jehoash wanted to put that money towards a, a particular purpose, this money was received in three ways. One, each man's census money. This was the half shekel each Israelite older than the age of 20 had to pay every year. This can be found in Exodus chapter 30, verse 14 and 15. Uh, and then each man's assessment money, that is literally each man the money of his souls of his estimating. Uh, this was a kind of property tax based on the personal assessment of each individual, uh, which can be found over in Leviticus uh, chapter 27, verse 2. And then the third way was all the money that a man's purposes in his heart to bring into the house of the Lord. Uh, it says these were freely given offerings and over and above the required donations, like anything uh, other than your tithe that you give towards the church, this that's what that would have been. You know, you see a need there, and then you you feel blessed to give it, and then you give it to bless somebody else or some, some other thing that goes to uh, to further the Lord's kingdom. Different between an offering and a tithe. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It says all these sources have been uh, had ever been. Uh, in some measure open but instead of repairing the dilapidated dilapidation in the Lord's house the priests and the, and the Levites had converted the income into what? their own use yes. right? their own income that's yes, right sir. yeah and it says that King Joash or Jeho uh, Jehoash uh, working through the priests corrected this problem uh -huh. and what did it say that they had done? The chest, and then he drilled a hole. Oh, the chest. And they were doing what? They were taking that money out, yeah. filling up bags. Mm -hmm. And you can only understand how that, how those bags got heavy in their hands. Yeah, and did what? Started working on that heart, and they devil right. knew the whole greed. And does that happen to these days? Yep. Yeah, you see people. I just saw mm -hmm. read read uh, not too long ago. A woman got convicted of paying her bills. She's working at a water water place and was embezzling money from them and took what a million something dollars or something like that from so them. Big chunk. It was a big big chunk of money. She was. She said, "I have bills to pay and they don't pay me enough." She was just stealing that money. It's just you know, and she was in charge of all the financial stuff and the money. And she's like, "Oh, they won't miss it." She was taking a little bit out every yeah. time and. Over, I think I, I forgot how many years she worked there, but she worked there. She was long, been there a long time. And that was around here, somewhere. yeah. It was around, mm -hmm. this, around here. She got free from the board, then. Yeah? yeah, she she had started living over her means, you know. So somebody started digging into their other than her, their finances, and realized there was money missing. Mm -hmm. That's how they caught up with it. Yeah, she's living on her means. Yeah. He says, let them repair the damages of the temple. So he was adamant, right? He, he's trying to correct this issue. <clears throat> the condition of the temple because it was his home as a young boy. Remember that? The temple needed restoration because it was vandalized by Athalia and her sons. In Second Chronicles chapter 24, verse 7, we notice it says, for the sons of Athalia... 
uh, that wicked woman had broken into the house of God and had also presented all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord to the Baals. You know, so... Um, Verses 6 through 13, we notice that the money is gathered for the uh, rebuild of uh, the temple, you know, for the work. It says that, uh, you know, it, now it was by the 23rd year of King Jehoash that the priest had not repaired the damages of the temple. That's quite a long time, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, it says, so King Jehoash called Jehoiada the priest and the other priests and said to them, you know, why haven't you repaired the damages of the temple? Now, therefore, do not take more money from your constituencies, but deliver it for repairing the damages of the temple. So this was his way of saying, guess what? You guys failed, so now I'm going to have to take charge of, of what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we see that they didn't really like that either, did they? Mm -hmm. No, so it says, so it was whenever they saw that there was much money in the chest that the king's scribe and the high priest came up and put it in bags and counted the money that was found in the house of the Lord. Then they gave the money which had been apportioned into the hands of those who did the work. So by the 23rd year, you know, we, of King Jehoash's reign, uh, Jehoash, so we know that he noticed that there wasn't nothing being done to the to the temple. Oh, you know, since building projects take a long time, don't they? Mary and I thought we were going to have our house done <laughs> six months. And over a year later, we finally get it done. And it's really, really not done. But, you know, you know, building a house to a home takes forever, if you ask me. But, you know, you can only imagine the house of the Lord, you know. And the minute it's done, you start on maintenance and repair. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And depending on the home, if it's a mobile home, you have to constantly, it takes a lot more yeah. than if it's a site built, real, slab, right. two by four. Right. Or if you're being home. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. <laughs> uh, and depending on uh, what kind of, if you want to get right down to it, uh, it's a perfect example of what you mentioned just now, Rick. Uh, depending on uh, which it does say in scripture the type of stuff that they used to, to repair mm -hmm. the temple if they weren't getting the right type of stuff material, it would, material for repairing the temple mm -hmm. it would have taken a lot more yeah. you know, uh, but what a great way to collect money oh yeah absolutely yeah. bring your offerings here yeah Okay. And the priests that were doing notice it said to each to their constituency. So each one in the district, however they divided it up, was oh, reaping big, big, big profits big off of this, but they weren't sending it where it needed to be. Really be uh, they right. were pocketing it. Yeah. And so where do we do we have that problem in the world today? Yeah. Yeah. Just, oh, just, 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 you send me a thousand dollars. Yes. Three thousand dollars. The Lord told me if you'll just send seven hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plant a seed of faith. And uh, you can you can go on the internet right now and just look up, just type in prosperity preacher preachers, how do they get rich? And it will show you. And that's mm -hmm. just what Rick is saying. They tell you, hey, just send this and you'll be blessed. And people are sending $700 mm -hmm. or $300. I'll send you this prayer and it'll bless you. And, and, and they'll send them this little $3 rug or whatever. And they say, you know, they're sending in thousands of dollars this person. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a 700 uh, Do what? There's a 700 says the priest took a chest, bored a hole in the, its lid, and set it, uh, set it beside the altar. Under the direction of King Jehoash, Jehoash the priest gave the people the, the opportunity to give. Even willing givers should be given an opportunity. It says then he placed a collection chest in a strategic location on the right side of the altar, giving the repair project a high priority and a corresponding high visibility. So, 
you know, what should have been done if you asked me is they should have put that one over there and they just should have left the one for the for the repairing bits of the temple mm -hmm. and instead, you know, you have one over the other, you can choose to give to this one or this one, which one do you think they're gonna give to? You know. Uh, well there was a portion that was to go to the to priest the priests, for yeah. their Right. Well, Upkeep and right. you know uh, yeah. living. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. But anything over and above that was to go to the temple repairs. Right. It says uh, it says moreover they did not require an account from the men who into whose hand they delivered the money. And it says through good administration of this project they were able to find men who could be trusted to use the money wisely and honestly. The project was previously stalled, not because of lack of money, but because of poor man money management. And that's that was one of the problems. And it's like kind of not getting to Longview and running out of gas <laughs> when you knew you had to go all the way into Longview and then and back to, to Palestine. Palestine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Rick and I talked about that yesterday. So, Rick was able to go and help out some friends, of, well, a friend of mine that worked for me at Builders Best called me, I was working the game, and they told me, you know, that they were stuck on 31 outside of Kilgore Longview, and I said, okay, uh, well, I'll try to find someone that might be able to help. But they didn't tell me that they had five people there. Ooh. I just thought it was just him and his wife, and his wife, has seizures. So I was thinking to myself, okay, it's just him and her. And so uh, Rick goes out there, him and Miss Andre, to go to help. And then they first they tell me that they don't have a belt. Their belt broke on the vehicle. Then they call me back and say they have a belt, but they don't have any gas. And so I let Rick know, well, they have a belt, you know, but they don't have any tools to put it on. I don't know how they're going to get it on. And then they don't have... Uh, have gas money. So Rick gets a little bit of gas in a can, and then Rick finds out that they got to go from where they're at, clean out to Palestine, back to Palestine. And one of the women is pregnant. So you got one that has seizures, one that's pregnant, and the other three don't have any money. <laughs> you're like, why do you leave and go to Kilgore if you know you don't have enough money to get back to Palestine? You know? Rick, I do appreciate it. <laughs> Rick was able to go and help them, you know. Uh, so we see here in uh, 17, verses 17 and 18, uh, King Jehoash pays King Haziel of Syria tribute money to avoid an attack against Jerusalem, right? So what does he do here? Do you notice what he does? What Jehoash does? Sacred stuff. Uh, there you go, Jackie. Not at all. Just in the clutch. Instead of trusting in the Lord, yes, he went. He uses the vestments of the Lord to uh, yeah, were dedicated mm -hmm. uh, to the Lord uh, through to the buy other off. kings to buy off this other king, so he wouldn't be invaded. And if you ever submit to bribery. They know it never stops. No, mm -hmm. no. They know they can use it against you. Mm -hmm. So we know that. It says, Then Haziel mm -hmm. set in face to go up to Jerusalem. At this time, the kingdom of Syria attacked Judah with an inferior army, but God used them as an instrument of judgment against the disobedient Joash. King Joash was wounded in a battle outside of Jerusalem. Uh, it says, Then, and then, uh, uh, Joash, the king of Judah, took all the sacred things and sent them to Haziel, king of Syria. Instead of trusting God, like Rick said, Jehoash traded prior blessings, mm -hmm. the sacred treasures of the temple, to protect his capital and kingdom mm -hmm. against the attacking Syrians. Mm -hmm. it says he, uh, he was in a difficult place. He was wounded with an attacking and successful army bearing down on Jerusalem, and he found it hard to trust God in this difficult place because he had stopped trusting God in the easier circumstances long before. And that went back to 
you know, the management of the money of uh, rebuilding the temple, you know. And so... Uh, and they allowed the perverted forms of worship in the high places. Yes, yeah, absolutely. They started, they started going back to uh, uh, worshiping uh, the wooden idols. Uh, and the host of heaven, <coughs> as right. they called it. It says, now, uh, so we know that the rest of the acts of Joash uh, says there is no record of repentance on Joash's part. He never came back to or fulfilled his brightly, bright promise, uh, early promise, Lord. Uh, his servants around uh, arose and formed a conspiracy, didn't they? Mm -hmm. and, they and they killed him. <clears throat> says this is startling and shows that the blessings of God long before vanished from the compromised king who began so well but failed to finish well. Since the murder of Joash by his officials or servants implies that it may have been the result of dissatisfaction following the defeat of Haziel. So disobedience brings its own bitter reward in what God's people sow, they, they always, in some way or another, reap. Joash abundantly deserved his inglorious and terrible end. You know, and you know why, right? Does anybody know why? Mm -hmm. Ralph, didn't follow the Lord. <coughs> he what? Um, didn't follow the Lord. That's right. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't obey God. The God oh, no. the Lord. Yeah, partially. It's like you said, it started off well, but then at the end, he decided to give up on God. Mm -hmm. You know? And don't get me wrong, we, we all have given up once or twice here and there. You know? Uh, but it calls for us to do what? Repent. Yeah, mm -hmm. Turn away from right. that. Get back on the right track. Mm -hmm. You know? Because Hebrews 13, 8, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We, we change, but he doesn't. That's right. You know. It says, thus ending a reign full of promise and hope in the beginning, but uh, cruel and ruinous intentions in the end. It says, never was, uh, never was the hand of God's justice more significant, or, yeah, significantly stretched out against an apostate king and faithful, faithless people than at that mm -hmm. time. So, any questions on uh, on this chapter, chapter 12, 2 Kings chapter 12? We see that King Jehoash, he started out good, but he en ended, it ended with his death, right? Uh, because he didn't follow through uh, on his obedience to the Lord. And God tells us to be obedient. He tells us, you know, that he wants us to be obedient. And that if we're obedient, he'll give us life and give us a life abundantly. Abundantly, right? His death wasn't a peaceful one. No, it wasn't. Because uh, when, and you can almost understand, can you, can, I don't know, I think I can. I can't speak for all you guys, but do you guys feel like uh, you understand why his people conspired against him in the end? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Absolutely. You know. Right. Because not only not only did he not do what God said, he did what? He gave away all their blessings mm -hmm. from, yeah, right. from past kings. You know, that like taking mm -hmm. stuff out of the temple and out of the king's home to give to someone instead of you know, uh, yeah, instead of asking the Lord, what what should I do? Should I attack him back? You know, and, well, how do I defeat this man in your name? You know. Uh, he didn't do that. So taking it from his own king's treasure, took it from the Lord's treasure, which is wrong. Right. Took away from their blessings. Is exactly that right? And God, God's uh, judgment on him. Yep, exactly you know, right. Was his downfall? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Uh, Ralph, got anything? You good? Jackie? No. All right. With that being said, uh, Frank, close us in a word of prayer then. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you once again for this day, Lord, and many blessings. Right. We thank you for this message that's been brought. We ask again, Lord, that you put your hand upon the spoken man, spoken prayer request, Lord, right. and help us to continue down the path that you want us on, Lord, and do that's the right. things that you want us to do. And be with us as we go into the sound service and preaching afterwards, Lord, keep us safe as we go our separate ways. 
Bring us back to the courtyard, Jesus, name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.